I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please keep in your thoughts uh, this evening the men and women uh, protecting us around the world? Good, thank you. Sue, would you, uh, would you have a moment? Would you call the roll for the purpose of attendance, please? Ms. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. Disla. Mr. Hatem. Mr. Cirillo. Ms. Marmel. Mr. Rossi. Absent. Mr. Lamontagne. Present. Okay. Um, minutes of September 13th. Can I have a motion to approve those, please? So moved. I have a second. Second discussion. I'm oh, sorry. What'd you? Oh, he did? I didn't hear him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Melissa, could we have a cash balance report, please? Yep. So the account balance as of September 6, 2022 was $2,195,223.43 plus deposits from September 7th to September 20th of $89,950.62, less payroll on September 15th of $952,215.28, less a warrant on September 12th of $1,000, a warrant on September 13th of $297,088.10, and a warrant on September 19th of $3,600, giving us a book balance on September 20th of $1,031,270.67 and a bank balance of $2,438,737.76. On the MMDT account, we had an opening balance on September 6th of $8,846,359.12. We have year-to-date interest as of September 6th of $10,233.89 for a total of $8,856,593.01, um, giving us a total MMDT balance of $9,887,868.68. So moved. Do, we have a, do I have a second? Don't, don't fight over it, guys. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, good. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, you'll notice uh, this consolidated cash reconciliation report was a handout. Revolving fund, budget report are in the packet. Any, any questions on any of those? Okay, communications, uh, donations of 2006 Cadillac DTS valued at $4,475, donated by Ms. Joyce Kafori from Lawrence, Mass. See, no articles and no public participant. I'm sorry? Uh, oh, I our streaming is not working. You what? I'm sorry? The streaming is not working. Oh. The streaming over here. Okay, I can check on that. Okay. Okay. Is it not working or are we just not seeing it? Not okay. seeing it online. Yeah, so. Well, there's no TV set up. Oh, he was here just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Okay, uh, this time then the chair will accept the motion to take a five minute recess. So move. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Vivian made a motion, I second it.
this evening we've invited uh, uh, the a representative from the uh, North Reading uh, Busing uh, Transportation Company to address the committee. Uh, we have Lisa. I have her last name. What was the last name? Altricio. Um, here, uh, who worked with Bill on a lot of the bus issues day to day, bus issues every day, to. Uh, address any of the concerns or questions that the committee might have. I would ask uh, Lisa if she could kind of give us a report where at this time, uh, the most recent report on what are some of the difficulties that we're dealing with right now here at the school that, from her perspective. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, Obviously, we're having late bus issues. Um, we have, um, especially in the PM, is where our issues are. Uh, so we, I do have some, some, some resolutions that I'm seeing in the near future. Um, I just wanted to start off by just stating some of the things that we're doing with recruiting in order to try to get more drivers. Um, as everybody knows, there's a labor shortage, a national labor shortage. Um, and so that is obviously affecting uh, the buses coming back. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so one of the things, um, if you haven't heard, we have the recruiting center in Lawrence that we opened up. Um, Governor Baker and Commissioner Riley were there for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, it is a walk-in bilingual um, center for the, and there's the, the store is um, right downtown. So it's, it's visible, it's walking, there's a lot of foot traffic. Um, which has been really helpful. We've had a lot of people come in. Um, we've had about 85 people. We're, we're also, um, we are partner, partnering with the Lawrence community and focusing on ESL training. And so we've got about 85 people right now that are in the process of, of learning English in order for them to be able to at least communicate a little bit on the buses and get them either monitors or drivers. So we're in the process of working um, with the recruiting center. Um, we've also launched a community outreach events, um, employee ambassadors that will be building referral networks within the community. Um, advertising, obviously, radio, so social media, um, school districts have sent flyers, mass flyers out to parents, just letting them know that we're here, we're looking for drivers, we're paid training, um, you can get your CDL, we will get, walk you right through the process. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what we're doing for the, getting the people in. Also, um, we have increased our wages. Um, the wages are going up and we need to be competitive there. So over the uh, overall, we've increased wages in the area about $1.7 million um, from FY22 to FY23. So that has seen some significant um, increases in people applying, which is very wonderful. We've actually, Greater Lawrence Tech has three drivers that are just waiting to take their tests and they will be ready to go. So that will solve <laughs> three of your 10 bus, late bus issues in the afternoon. Um, so other things is we're offering $5,000 sign-on bonuses for anybody that comes with a CDL license, $4,000 sign-on bonus for um, current employees that will be upgrading if they wanna go from a 7D to a CDL. Um, so that's an in-house bonus. Um, also offering $3,000 sign-on bonuses for anybody that has a Class B um, with a P endorsement. Um, again, paid training. We're doing 20 hours paid training, which a lot of um, businesses are not doing. It's, you know, they come with their CDL. They go and they pay for it themselves. The employees are paying for themselves. So we're offering the paid training, which has um, been, again, another thing that we've seen significant increases in applicants coming in. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing to try to get more people into the pipeline. Um, right now, like I said, we've got three people that are waiting for tests. They are assigned to Greater Lawrence Tech. We have had them doing um, dry runs to learn the routes so that when they pass their test, they're gonna be right out on the road. Um, so that will help with, you have right now 
basically 10 routes that are running late in the afternoons. So we're focusing on the ones that are running the latest to get getting to school to pick up um, the students. So once we have those three drivers in place, we're going to use those three drivers to go back and get the, um, there's another three, a group of three routes that are running late. Um, and they're, they're, they're kind of like that, almost like 3.48, 3.50, almost four o'clock. So these drivers will be able to go back because they'll have nothing else to, to head out to. They can head back and pick up the remaining three routes that are late, um, which will solve six of the extremely late pickups that we've been having over the past three, two, three weeks. Um, the other is um, we are also working to try to do some um, route adjustments to be able to, so the last four routes are, are buses that are getting there about 15 to 20 minutes late, and we feel that we can make some route adjustments to get those drivers on time. So I hope within the next three to four weeks, we will have everybody picked up by, you know, your 2.50, your 3 o'clock, that time frame. Um, so th that's that's where we are with the update on on what these uh, um, these um, investments have done in order to get people through is that we are seeing people in the pipeline. I have others that are in the pipeline, but we tend to not talk about those until they they have their hours. When they have their hours, um, they're required to have 60 hours of training time, and that can take a while <laughs> to get people through the 60 hours. Um, but we are looking at a target of when someone starts to be through the pipeline within six weeks. So as those drivers come out, um, they'll be assigned to Greater, Lowell Te Greater Lawrence Tech drivers. So. Good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, I had a question. So it seems like the major issue is not lack of equipment, it's lack of drivers. Oh, correct. Correct. So, I mean, yeah. once you get the driver situation rolling, equipment should not be a, a should not be an issue. Nope, not at all. We have the buses. Okay. Yep. And one other question too. You were saying that you're uh, you're teaching certain applicants English. Are you also teaching Spanish to certain? I mean, because we have a large Spanish population. The whole Merrimack Valley has a large Spanish population. Is is that also being done? Or just just a question. S so no, what we're focusing on is trying to get applicants to be able to pass the test. So one of the things that we were able to do is get, um, we had been advocating for a while to have the 7D, which is your sped routes, your smaller vehicles, um, uh, getting that test in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And we have managed to do that. So the RMV is now teaching and giving that test in Spanish, which oh. has helped with um, the increase of the 7D drivers and being able to get them through a lot quicker than we had in the past. Um, so, and then the CDL, um, those th that test is not in Spanish right now. It has to be in English. So we're really focusing on trying to get, um, you know, Spanish-speaking employees to be able to pass a CDL test right. to get them in the bus. Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald? Actually, you answered back in the beginning. In the beginning, you had references, referenced the late buses, and I was thinking late buses like for the, the runs for the uh, football team. You're talking about late because they're not getting here until almost 4 o'clock. All right, Correct. thank you. Yep. Mr. Sorrell? Yeah, and we're talking about an hour to 90 minutes for, a lot, for almost um, 13 buses and kids that are still stuck here when they should be at home. And I'm aware about your center because I was actually there as well oh, great. Um, so which as I'm getting the emails of the buses that are continuously late throughout the last three or so weeks in conversation with a couple of the reps that were there as well um, is very dis to me is a problem when our kids are not getting picked up um, it's a great is a great partnership with Lawrence and 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 I also facilitate the mayor's Hotel task force somewhere so i'm kind of curious of who you guys are partnering with um to teach the english to um the drivers so i'll let you answer that one first yeah so who we're partnering with is um Gleck? 
Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that I'm like, I know. It's, so, um, so that's who we're mostly partnering with. Um, they were giving us like two slots. But what we are really now focusing on is getting someone in-house that works with us directly as an employee of ours. So trying to find that right person to come in and start helping because, like I said, the list is very long and obviously we can't take all of the slots. So they've, they've been kind enough to offer two. Um, at the last time I checked, it was two spots. So we are looking to get someone permanent full-time with our company. Into the into the recruiting center. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, and then the other, in conversation with plenty of of employees that work for you, the terminal that buses are is one of the worst terminals that you guys have. I'm not sure if that's correct, um, but the problem is, as I'm seeing it, this is not the first time we've had this problem. This is also has happened in the past, but this is the most time that it has been so consecutive with kids being so. So tardy. Um, I believe it was last year I had a conversation with the superintendent because I got stopped by parents saying that the kids are, are on the bus for two hours. That's a, a ride from here to Hartford. Um, and then our kids are here waiting two hours when a lot of them have to go home because they have to watch their siblings for their parents to go to work or they themselves have to go off to work to, to help support the family. And not only mentioning that those aspects is also the aspects of then the self have to being here for so long, they didn't go home to actually do homework or whatever they have to do to get ready for the next day of school. So the fact that it's been happening for more than three weeks to me is, is definitely a big problem. And I understand that there's a work shortage everywhere, but we have a contract that we definitely need to have it filled because I can't have kids here for almost two hours and 90 minutes just sitting around. Answer that, or just uh, take uh, it as a comment. Or yeah, I, 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 I understand, and we're really we are working and focusing on getting these routes back on time. And so we do have a plan. I have a three-week plan, and we'll we'll continue to move forward with it. I, I my ex expectations are in the next couple of weeks you'll see some improvements. I mean, for the CDL to go is like almost two months consecutive. Am I correct? And that's to go through the process? To go through the process of getting the CDL and so forth, because this is a conversation I've had with plenty of drivers that work for NRT. So uh, because it's a long process to um, get the CDL. For those who even want it. Um, so it is a long process. It, it's, it's actually, it's kind of, it, it's, it's up to the driver on how fast they want to go through it because they have to have 60 hours. 60 hours, it's however long it's going to take you. Um, we have been seeing um, people come through about five or six weeks, but others, they struggle. They take a lot, they may take longer, um, but we are seeing an average of people coming through about six weeks and being ready to be uploaded to the RMV to then be submitted to the state police to get a test and then have the test and so from the upload to the test date is about 10 days actually one final question Leo um, how many people um, do you have that need English classes and how many slots is um, Great Lawrence Community Action Council providing because if, if it's if you have more than they're, they're providing I could definitely get you more seats at, at other locations yeah I don't know the number I don't have the numbers here in front of me but I can certainly get them and and because we are seeing a lot of people coming through the recruiting center. Most of them are for 7Ds, they're not for CDLs um, or monitors, which we also need. So, um, but I can absolutely get you those numbers. Uh, Zoila? Uh, can you, um, you yep. Your microphone, please. I didn't pick that up. You're representing a company and your name is Lisa. I don't, I didn't get anything else. It's El Teresio. Do you want me to spell it? Mm, that's <laughs> fine, no. Okay. So what company are you uh, representing? Uh, NRT, North Reading Transportation. Oh, it is the one, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes, <laughs> at the beginning of school, this is kind of a touchy subject, but I feel 
with some good reason that Greater Lawrence Tech has become low man, low school on the totem pole. And the reason I say that is, in the beginning, all of us saw Methuen was having problems, Anova had problems, not everybody was having problems, other than Whittier, who has their own buses. And over the past weeks, all of the noise from those communities has settled down. Either internally they've found solutions or whatever, but on our parent unofficial website, the, no the noise has not stopped, nor has it to each of us receiving um, emails, telephone calls from the parents of students who are impacted. So I just feel that, I don't know, I, I, I really don't know except that if, why haven't you been able to solve our problem when you've been able to solve the problems for the other schools that you also provide transportation for. And I know I'm putting you on the hot seat and you're the representative here tonight, but it's a, a question that we we are all truly upset about. Um, it, it's just untenable that our kids are still here 90 minutes after school left. And I understand, to, so that being said, how many of your people in the pipeline are women? Back in the day, 20 years ago, there were more women bus drivers than there were guys, including right here at the school. So do you have many women in the pipeline ready to do this? So do I? Um, I know of one person that is, that is supposed to test very soon. He is not a woman. Um, I do have another driver that is a woman, and I'm not sure about the third. I'm probably, if I had to say, I would say it would be about 50-50. Um, yeah, I, I think that, um, and to, to answer your question about, you know, why has the noise settled, a lot of the drivers that come on, they, um, they bid on a certain district. So even though we are not a union company, we still do some things where we bid up that there's seniority, there's um, bidding, and they pick a district that they want to work in. Um, and so most of those drivers are settled in those districts, and that's the routes that they've picked to drive. And as a bus driver, I'm sure you understand that. Um, so with, with Greater Lawrence Tech, um, there were already open routes going into the, in the afternoons. The afternoons is where we're struggling at, in, in the, at school is, is the afternoons. And there were open, there was eight open slots. Um, so that's what we're looking to fill is having drivers that are coming in now new to the company that we can assign to. Whereas at the beginning of the school year, the drivers are picking their routes. But now that everybody's picked, we can now start assigning people to, as they come in, to specific routes, which is what we're doing. Thank you. Anything for, uh, Zoila? Um, you mentioned earlier that it will take another four weeks or so to get things better. I don't think it's going to take four weeks. I have, like I said, I have three drivers that I'm just waiting that are assigned to Greater Lawrence Tech that just need to take the test. So there, they could be within a week to 10 days is usually what, like I said, once it's uploaded, we wait about 10 days to get a, a test date. So and as soon as they pass, they can start driving in the next day or so. There's nothing else that can be done to us to get some resolution before that time, or is that it? Yeah, so as they, as they pass, we'll put them right on the route. So, and that's why we've given them the route sheets right now so that they can learn them. So there's no delay. There's gonna be no delay. They're gonna know the route. They're gonna know the stops um, and we can get them going. So it really just and depends on them. Just, it's gonna alleviate just the three or six of the it's going to it's going to problems. alleviate yeah it's going to alleviate the 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 big ones the ones that are that 90 minutes that some of them that are we're looking at 90 minutes there's five of them that are you're really talking about 
they're arriving about 250 248 so those are not the unbelievable like 330s 345s that or four o'clocks that we've been looking at those are the ones that we're going to target to get fixed first and then try to fix the rest of of the later routes that are coming in at like that 250. Uh, Vivian? So when do you foresee um, everything being fixed with all the buses being taken care of? Like what, what is your projection as to when this whole situation will be resolved? Right now, I, I can't give you a projection. I can give you what I have right now, which I know, which is I have three drivers that are waiting for their tests. And then we will have those drivers go back for the other three that are running late. So I would, as soon as those drivers are done their tests, we will have a resolution for at least six of them. Um, two of them will, three of them will be on time. Three of them will be, They'll probably still be waiting about a half an hour until we can get more drivers in. And then the other, the other four is, is gonna be that, it's gonna still be around that 250 mark right now. And as the drivers come on, we will always, I'm gonna look at the latest and fix the latest and just work our way through. But I don't feel comfortable giving you a prediction right now until I have more drivers that are further through the training I'm more than happy to give you an update. <laughs> no, definitely. I I would need one um, because it's only technically resolving three buses, even though those three bus drivers are coming back to pick up, you know, the other three routes. Mm -hmm. It's still not on time, whether it's only by 15 minute delay or 20 minute delay is still a delay. Um, and it's an issue that has not been resolved. Um, I'm curious. Um, all the things that you were describing as to what NRT is doing to bring people in, is that something that you guys just decided to do now? Um, or, you know, these are things that you've been um, instituting into your, into your company for quite some time to, to recruit people? So, yeah, we have been doing it. Um, we have been doing all these initiatives. We've been tweaking them a little bit one way or another, just trying to see what the ebb and flow is of, of drivers coming in. Um, there, over the COVID period, nothing seemed to work. Um, I, I'll be honest, I think people were making more money on unemployment than they were here um, and coming to work. So, but now we are seeing people come in we are seeing people be interested and we we ha finally have a pipeline so this is working um the one the big thing that's working as well is um is having our 70 drivers progress to a cdl so they've been part of the company they are now feeling comfortable with driving and understanding you know what it is to be a school bus driver um and so we have a lot of progressions going on within the company, which is, is, is always helpful because you have people that are dedicated. They're not just gonna kind of go through and, and leave. They, they, they wanna be here, so. Fred, you all set? Uh, Mr. Cerullo? Yeah. Um, and sorry, I know I said it was final, but it, it comes back to conversations that a lot of bus drivers after the last meeting we had in, Leo, um, I did reach out because uh, the pressure was going to be on the superintendent to give us an explanation um, after our last meeting. But I believe sometime this week or last week, I contacted Leo and said, "No, we need somebody from the bus company to answer the questions for this for the for us." And a lot of bus drivers reached out to me, and, and you got a lot of new bus drivers coming in that's going to be making more than the ones that are already there. And from their complaint is, we should get more money um, as well which is not my issue because I, to be honest, my issue is making sure our students are getting picked up on time. Um, and I was there for the grand opening of, the, of your outreach center and I know you're getting all these electric buses and everything else and your partnership with Lawrence Public Schools. Um, with that said, my issue is that if there was a brush shortage issue in the summer that, we, that you were aware of 
um, that was going to affect our school or any other school district. But to me, I'm worried about this school because I get the, when I get the calls or st I get stopped in market basket or whatever, Tom get, gets the same thing. Um, Marilyn, is vivid. we all get all the same stops and all the same questions when their kids are still in the school building waiting. If there was a, if you knew there was a, sh a shortage then, did you contact the school to say this is what's going to happen? Because when I got the first one message, I looked at it, didn't really pay too much mind to it because it was, I, I was assuming it was the first day of school, things happened. The second one, I took a little bit of notice, but then I got, I'm at the bus stop where I have parents complaining, and then I get the third notice, the fourth notice, and the superintendent was the first one to get a call from me to what's going on with, with this. With, with this with this issue we have with the buses because this keeps progressing and it just went on from one week to another week to another week. I didn't get any message this week, but not, not to saying that it's not happening. Um, so if you knew there was a bus shortage in the summer of drivers, did you contact the school to say this is what's going on? Um, let's work together. So we did have a meeting with the school district and um, we did let them know that there was an issue with the PM um, and that we were in hopes that we would, there was seven still, seven PM routes open. Um, but we were anticipating that we were gonna be able to cover the majority of them. Um, we had, I don't, everybody may know that when school's about to start, about 10% of your drivers do not return. Um, so knowing where that those drivers are going to be and what district um, is the unknown part. Um, but we we could have, I'll be honest, we could probably have done a better job in updating and keeping um, the district updated with exactly what our numbers were. But we we did have a conversation with them. There was a conversation about seven v seven buses being late. Because I'm going back to one of the emails and it's showing, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 buses late. Not 13, 16. Um, so depending on how many students are in each bus and which directions they're going, if they're going to Lawrence, if they're going to um, um, Andover, North Andover, or Methuen, that's a lot of kids that's still waiting here. And that's not even counting the kids from the After Dark program. I don't even know if, if they're still waiting around here, um, going back to school, to Lawrence, um, to their schools. So, and I know you can't give us a prediction of, of, of the thing, but you're talking about you got three drivers that are gonna come in, and like my colleague from Lawrence said, that only resolves three, three buses. Because they still have to come back here, depending on traffic, because Anybody who's been around the city, if they're going to Lawrence and Methuen, there's, there's definitely traffic. Um, that means they're going to be here for another several minutes before they, another group gets picked up. Um, so to me, it's completely unacceptable that, that this has gone on as, as long as, as it has. Um, and, and I'm standing there, and I was standing there for this grand opening, this great center that's going to do all this outreach and, and get all these drivers and so forth. Um, and then come the school year, we're going three weeks of our kids here. And we're talking about 13, 16 buses, not 13, not two, not three. Um, it's completely unacceptable to me. And I'm gonna leave it to, all to my, the rest of my colleagues. I, I actually wanna thank you for coming and giving um, some kind of an, an explanation. And I definitely want you to come back and, and let us know what's going on um, and keep us informed because the way Keeping us informed keeps our constituents informed, keeps them knowing that we are actually doing something to make sure that we're resolving their issue. I'm, I'm, I'm talking with Bill every day or texting with Bill every day and keeping them updated with the office and myself. So we are doing everything we can to be communicating in a better way um, and making sure that you know we give at least the updates of what's going to be late. Um, I think that our last meeting was, um, went fairly well and, and we were um, kind of in line with each other and um, we, I, I, 
I feel like the district is, is feel, seeing it. It's not 16 anymore. It is those 10 that we're having that issue with um, over the past couple of days, maybe the past week and a half or so. We've, er, we've fixed some of the issues. So we are, we are actively working on it. And you know, I apologize to the community because I know how difficult it's, it's been. Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald? Yes, I have three specific questions for um, our superintendent after um, Lisa is through. She, this is dealing with the busing, but pertaining to the inner workings here at the school. Vivian? Um, out of curiosity, um, considering that you commented that the three new bus drivers would be uh, once they're they finish their route that they would come back the current bus drivers that you have now w is there an incentive in place for them to participate in um, also um, if they were done with their route to come and do a second one to pick up the remaining you know buses that are not being tended to at the moment so right now, those are the ones that are running late, that they're coming back and picking up those kids because they're finishing their routes. A lot of the routes are longer, so we're looking at those routes that we can get back quicker to have those people come back. Um, but that's how the, the late half is getting, is getting picked up, is by those drivers returning. Okay, and anything further? Okay, if I could, before I, I call on Mrs. Fitzgerald again, I do want to thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It's not an easy thing to do because, uh, you know, you knew you weren't going to get a lot of attaboys, yeah. you know what I mean? But uh, we do, I do appreciate you coming. Uh, could I, uh, I was hoping that we could ask you uh, if we could be in contact with you uh, once a week, like by Friday, if you could write an email to the superintendent, he'll share it with us on the progress that you're making or the lack of progress. You know, I, I know that sounds not fresh, but you know what I'm saying? Okay, we hit a, one of those three people is now working for XYZ instead of, instead of us. You know what I'm saying, type of deal. If we could stay in the loop, we won't have a lot, more, a lot of questions. If that's is that acceptable, uh, and if we could do it by Friday, this way here the superintendent will be able to, uh, to share it with us, um, you know, and then on our Tuesday meetings, you know. Absolutely, deal. and I will leave my card on the table, and you mm -hmm. guys can have it, so that if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Wait, we're always better off to go through administration. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really the way it should go. Okay. It should go through administration uh, to you. You know, but I I appreciate that. You know, Absolutely. type of deal. If you could just hang around a few uh, moments to, uh, for Mrs. Uh, God only knows what Mrs. Fitzgerald is going to have to say. Uh, I, I Oh, oh, you would. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'd like to excuse you then. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Like I says, uh, I, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And if we could start that by, you know, this Friday, I'd appreciate it. You know, by the end of business. Uh, I don't know if you have John's uh, email. I do. Okay, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I would, I would appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Okay, continuing on with the busing uh, update. Uh, Mrs. So you understand it's a public meeting, correct? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I mean, it is a, no, I'm just saying there are many people, who, you know what I'm saying? But you wanted her to leave, I don't know why. Oh, no. You know, so just she saying. wouldn't have to listen to stuff she couldn't solve. I know, but at least she would have it. Okay, whatever, Sorry, it's okay. okay. No, no problem. I truly didn't mean to send her on her way. I was trying to okay. give her a reason to be able to leave okay okay so continue I, please yes so I have three questions at our last meeting you mentioned another busing company specifically I think it was the Ramon busing company that you were going to try to set up negotiation between NRT and Ramon did we have um, any luck with that that was question number one question number two is since I look at NRT as failing to meet their negotiation, negotiated um, contract. Um, are we going to see some reduction in our phenomenally large uh, busing bill? Question number two. And qu question number three, what 
problems are we having to deal with either space wise supervision wise with the children that are staying here 90 minutes later where are they uh, doing their homework what are we doing to give them snacks whatever so those three things the Ramon busing the m negotiating downwards our uh, financial contract and then problems that might have arisen from um, this problem Superintendent. so uh, first of all in terms of uh, working with Ramon transportation out of Lawrence had several conversations with him had conversations with the leadership at NRT um, they were all in favor of uh, trying to work something out uh, in uh, communicating with the Attorney General's office we could not negotiate a contract with Ramon directly but what we could do is if NRT was willing to subcontract them that would be acceptable so I asked NRT and Ramon uh, to come together to uh, uh, at a meeting with a meeting with me which happened uh, which happened a couple of days ago um, and as a result of that um, it has been determined that um, Ramon cannot provide the services that are necessary uh, he um, doesn't have and he has six buses I believe which he uses for the charter school which he wouldn't be able to get here on time for us and um, and then the other situation is um, he said he could get he can't get any more buses he thought he could get buses but he can't uh, he learned a lot by meeting with uh, NRT because there's a lot of stuff he didn't know uh, didn't understand uh, also one of the other situations he, <coughs> he said he could get drivers but really he didn't really have drivers he didn't really understand what was necessary to get a driver licensed so that didn't work out e either um, so there was really no way that Ramon could actually provide any service or subcontract anything with NRT um, so that didn't work out when they left and NRT was very, very good about the whole situation. They were trying to work with them, tell them they would help train their, his drivers if he had drivers. They would do everything they could to make that work and also help him in any way they could to help him get off the ground with his business because they felt as though, you know, he's just starting out and he, he's got a lot to learn and they're willing to help him get going. So I thought that was very good on their part because they're basically he would be their competitors but they totally were all in favor of doing whatever they could to help his own organization. Uh, so th the, that organization, that bus company learned a lot from NRT, and I thought they were um, more, more than helpful in trying to make this work if it were at all possible. And when they left, they were going to meet together to try to see what they could do as a team to try to uh, see if there was any other things that they might have missed. So... Uh, the meeting didn't produce anything that would be helpful to us hopefully it's helpful to that particular company because it would be nice to have other companies out there that could you know be competitive and when we go out for a new bidding uh, particularly being <coughs> a Latino community uh, businessman in the city of Lawrence that would be awesome if we could have uh, him have a successful bus company so um, that was a result of that. Uh, in terms of our contract with um, uh, the bus company, <coughs> we will do an analysis on um, what, w what has been the impact in terms of our own students and what do we believe um, has benefited the bus company in terms of their own costs by not providing the service they should to us so that we can then know what kind of adjustments they should be making for us. Also meeting with our own attorney. I have contacted our own attorney a couple times to talk about what, you know, what were the recourses we could have, we had in terms of legally to make this happen for us. Um, there wasn't a whole lot given that this is a situation somewhat out of the bus company's hands, um, but still um, what our attorney said that if it continues to go on that uh, we would have a meeting to see if there any what what could be the possible repercussions in terms of legal uh, 
issues that we could uh, address with the company. So uh, we will be reaching out to uh, them uh, again this week to set something up now that we had this meeting and we've got and we had the bus two bus companies come together and we've I think we've come to realize it's not going to get settled I don't suspect that this will be settled over the next three or four weeks regardless of what you know they get three drivers is not gonna it's not gonna make a difference in terms it'll ma make a little difference certainly but it's not gonna resolve the whole problem until they have enough drivers to cover all the routes so um, so I think we'll um, we'll continue to pursue other alternatives uh, if we can, I don't know um, what other op opportunities we have. It's not like there are other bus companies. The state is aware of the situation, doesn't seem to have any solutions as well um, to help us at this point. We have some other issues rel relative to the buses, like we have our um, homeless students that the bus company is not providing services for that we're struggling to find a service for them a legal service for them um, in order to get them to school here so we're still dealing with that also um, as one of another problem we're dealing with we have three students we're trying to get to the school legally here uh, that have transportation problems Oh, and the third thing, I'm going to let Sue answer the third thing. She works closely with Bill with the students after school and the activities and the things uh, that the, the students are dealing with day to day in, um, during that time. Yeah, so uh, typically most of all of our buses are gone by 3 o'clock. We have um, Bill and Krista both are responsible for um, traffic patterns and busing as well as um, the entire security team. Uh, we also have had many of our administrators out there helping, um, you know, because it was basically Mr. Vogel and Ms. Gillis out in back with, it could be up to 100 students uh, supervising them. Um, our security staff typically would leave um, by 3 o'clock. So it's been kind of an all, I, I, I do want to recognize both um, Bill Vogel and Krista and other members of the security staff and the administrative staff that have really stepped up to ensure that those students are supervised. Um, we now have clubs and activities that have started on Tuesday and Thursdays. Our homework help um, program is also on Tuesday and Thursdays. Um, what we found is many of the students have now, um, and parents have made, started to make alternate arrangements for right now, so their students don't have to wait. Um, but we, um, we are ensuring that those students are supervised. Um, they're, in the, they're currently in the cafeteria and um, Bill has set up a system where um, he supervises out back so when a bus comes we uh, radio upstairs so the students that are inside are aware that their bus number has arrived. Um, so we've kind of tightened that up a little bit. Um, you know, but I, I say I will I have to say that it has been really a challenge for them because they have other duties that they, they have had to stop doing in order to supervise that. I hate him. Okay, Zoila. No, uh, oh, I thought I saw you. Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes. Um, so, f one question: You said, uh, Mr. Lavoy, you said that you, we couldn't get in contract with Ramon's bossing because I'm guessing it's because we already have a contract. So. That would be like a breach of contract or something like that? Well, um, the problem would be we'd have to put out an RFP that would take... Uh, and obviously, uh, what, uh, you, what you already mentioned, Ramon is not ready to no, do the No, the, they don't have the services so we didn't to do know, it. we didn't know that two weeks ago. Until we had them over here. And then the other question I had is what, you know, what are families saying? And I believe me... Um, the principal already answered that question because um, obviously they're doing some alternative to take care of the kids getting home or at least we are supervising. So do we have plan B or plan C to keep doing what we have to do or do better than we, what we're already doing? That's my question. Yeah, and I would say at this point, um, you know, now that we know that it is going to be a little bit more long term, I'd like to work with um, the superintendent as well as um, the discipline office and our after school programs to see if we can come up with at least 
something better for our students. Um, additionally, um, now that we have more information from the bus company, we will be um, doing more of it and uh, we'll be advising those families like so so because I've had parents say is this going to be one day and you know we say no um, I will say that we're doing um, on day to day uh, our I believe our team has gotten better in communicating with students and families like it's now pretty much the same buses every day but before just making sure that if a bus is going to be late that um, everyone is informed um, but I would agree now that we know that it's, it's a little bit um, more long term, we need to come up with some maybe some alternative activities for those students, ensure that they have snack. And now that we're getting into the routine of school day, um, we don't want kids just sitting here for 90 minutes. Like, can we provide them, um, you know, resources, a space to, to work on some homework or, or can we think a little bit outside the box? box especially you know now it's fall weather but the last thing we want to do is um, go through this when um, the, the weather gets colder okay uh, Frank Francis um, thank you um, and, and yes uh, I gotta commend uh, the staff for the communication that's how we have been able to track what what's been going on um, and it's been coming out daily sometimes before noon and I know what to expect throughout the day uh, but thank you for your light me because we definitely have to have something in place for these kids that are still here and I didn't think about the food situation until you brought it up but Mr. Superintendent you did bring up a, a, another interesting um, point that I didn't think of at the time either um, homeless kids that need to be in school that are not getting picked up because I know there was a time where some buses will pick up kids take off the other half of the kids that didn't make it to the bus stop on, before that because there's they're expecting to be there at a certain time um, are standing around realizing that where's the bus and the bus is dropping kids off here by 6 6 30 um, and I think that was only week one am I correct that hasn't happened since because um, I haven't heard about that since then but if we and, and based on the law if those kids that are homeless need to be here and need to be serviced so we have to look at something alternative, um, and depending where they are, um, to be able to get them here on time to be able to service them. But even if we get them here on time, then it's the problem of getting them back home. Yeah. So we we have at this point been using some limousine service. Uh, the people that drive those limousine services that need to have a 7D license. So that's been somewhat of a problem. Um, we're also in the process of negotiating with another bus company to provide services at twice the cost that we had originally uh, budgeted for uh, with the existing bus company. So uh, we're hoping to resolve that um, this week, actually, to try to finalize and make sure that there's clarity on who's picking up whom. We're trying to work with one of the communities, which is Newburyport, in trying to split some of the costs because a student lives in Newburyport and they're willing to provide some support in that, in that area. So I'll give you an example. There's one homeless student we have that has a, uh, a sibling that gets picked up, and I think they're going to Lawrence, Lawrence High School, but the bus company won't take our student because they said they're too full. So our student gets left behind and theirs gets taken to the other student gets taken home. So that's just one example of the kind of stuff that goes on that we're trying to deal with. Yeah, I'm quite aware of um, some of the issues, cause, but I was unaware of the homeless situation um, of, of kids that are housing insecure, which is the, the new catchphrase term. Um, but into the, you know, want to commend the staff that are staying and helping out with watching the kids and we don't have kids just here unsupervised um, I know that they're right to be home but the dedication to the kids in, in the school is far above anything else um, so uh, much kudos to them and everybody else involved I just wanted to make a final comment on our uh, meeting that we had with the bus company. I do want to say a sincere thank you to Ramon Transportation because they genuinely came in trying to help us resolve this problem. And, you know, they learned a lot, but their intent was to try to, 
do something to help us. So I truly appreciated that and let them know that. Uh, as I sit here, what I'll do is also uh, do something formally in writing to him to uh, express a thank you on behalf of the committee as well for trying to uh, support our school and our students. Anything, for, uh, Mr. Hatem? Mr. Lavoy, do we still honor the taxi vultures? We did that a few years ago. Would that help us with some of these homeless kids? That that really is illegal. We really cannot put kids on taxis. That's against the law. So we can't do that. Anything further on this matter? John, all set? Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, Superintendent Lavoy's self-assessment. I believe there was a handout given. You have a, doc you have a document I sent out. Uh, on the self-assessment, I'm not going to go through it because you're just getting it. So uh, I'll let you take it with you, take it home, and we can address uh, any of your questions and concerns regarding the self-assessment. But what I will do is go over the goal that I uh, put together and um, an explanation of why I'm presenting one goal uh, this evening. <coughs> So if you look on the goal sheet there, superintendent's goals, it has goal one. And goal one really is it's, uh, de uh, develop a five-year GLTS strategic plan. But goal one incorporates every standard uh, in the superintendent's evaluation uh, process. Uh, and each of those standards, which includes uh, all four of them, instructional leadership, management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture is captured will be captured in the strategic plan and I will be addressing all of these standards within the strategic plan and so the number one goal is I will work with all school staff and stakeholders to develop a new five-year strategic plan in this strategic plan we will establish key priorities to help us accomplish our goals to move us to the next level um, the focus indicators <coughs> which I've established some of the basic uh, focus indicators and um, this particular goal is a um, major undertaking which will incorporate working with the entire staff including teachers administrators um, uh, the uh, facilities um, cafeteria every aspect of the school CTE academic every aspect of the school we'll be addressing we'll be putting it together I'll be putting together teams <coughs> to develop this goal so uh, it'll also include um, stakeholders outside of the school um, also leader uh, municipal leadership and state leadership to be involved in this work so it's very comprehensive uh, time-consuming um, but the focus indicators will include improving the quality of teaching and learning review quality of existing programs and determining the need for future academic and vocational programs, recruitment, support, and retaining diverse teachers and, and leaders, um, or retain uh, diverse teachers and leaders, engaging uh, families as our partners in our work, ensuring efficient and effective operation systems. This also will include everything from uh, looking at the existing facilities, uh, and uh, where we need to do in order to increase enrollment in the school. We have right now some very um, future plans in place with regards to adding new programs, which the, uh, one of the main functions of adding new programs is to be able to increase enrollment, uh, but uh, also in order to do that, uh, increasing space so with that comes a lot of issues and challenges that need to be looked at in a very strategic way so that'll all be addressed in this strategic plan uh, so some of the actions at this time were to establish a steering committee that includes staff parents community stakeholders and students develop a timeline calendar to complete plan by September 2023 establish priorities for all aspects of the plan reach out to all stakeholders to seek involvement include strategic plan activities in our operational uh, admin operational meeting bi-weekly uh, report progress to, to the school committee monthly collect data from all departments and programs which will be ongoing determine strategic plan format um, and provide a rough draft progress 
presentation for feedback from the staff, stakeholder, and school committee somewhere between, I would say, April and May, and a final draft on September 2023, a five-year strategic plan that will provide Great Lawrence Technical School with a plan to provide our students with a high-quality education and to succeed in their career or post-secondary education. This plan will also support the community needs for skilled labor in all industries moving forward. Questions for the superintendent? Just take this document and uh, absorb it, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure the superintendent will continue on it. Did you have a question, for, uh, Mr. Cirillo? Thank you, Leo. Uh, through you. Are you saying we're not going to make the June deadline for July 1st submission? And we're going to push it to September? Do a report on progress. Uh, no later than May, beginning of May, so uh, which will be a substantial progress. You'll be able to see how close we are to completion. And um, but you'll be getting monthly reports also, so that you can give feedback. And uh, the committee will also be involved in some of the committee work that's going to be going on. So you'll be having ongoing communication with me to have a complete understanding of the work and and the progress. So uh, would certainly allow you to evaluate uh, just about every standard that I'm working on to give some uh, feedback on that. We pushing back the um, submission to DESI until September. That's because that's what so I can break goals sometimes are over can be over a two year period so I can break if you would prefer, I can give you a deadline. I can give you a more specific as what should be expected at the end uh, in May, early May, of what should be expected in early May, and, and then you can evaluate based on that. If that, and then uh, the rest of the goal, the second part of the goal would happen uh, as part of the second year plan. If that makes you feel more comfortable, I can certainly do that. Anything further? No, I'm not. No, I'm just saying. Yes, this is so. Yes. When does our present strategic plan expire? Our present ex uh, strategic plan expired beginning of last year. I would suggest that five years. It's not that it's ambitious, but I don't know if it's practical. I think a three-year plan is something so many strategic plans are done then they're sit there in a binder and they're never looked at again but a three-year plan with set dates constant so the strategic plan committee for all of the people that you've said here those people would meet on at least a quarterly basis to see the progress but i i just think that five years it's not that it's too ambitious I just don't think it's practical in its um, deployment that a three-year plan is much easier to um, check on just my personal opinion I just don't want something that sits around and never gets looked at and after five after five years maybe not a single one of us would be in this room to check to see if it's happening. So uh, I, I just, I, it, it's, just, it's just a thought um, that perhaps three years is more realistic for everybody. Here, here's the thing, uh, a five-year strategic plan is a requirement of the DSC, so I have to do a five-year plan. <coughs> and, um, Here's the thing I think what's important in the, in the work of this particular plan uh, is that there is complete uh, timelines and guidelines as to how we utilize the plan will be part of the plan. So in other words, <coughs> I agree with you 100%. Our last five-year plan, I think we looked at it twice. And so in order to do a five-year plan, we're trying, and I met with <coughs> Sue and I talked about this already several times, how do we incorporate a five-year plan into what we do day, year to year with our school improvement plan so that it's something we go back to on a regular basis. So that kind of 
activity has to be incorporated into the five-year plan so that it's ongoing and connected to what we do year to year and how we're going to do that I think needs to be outlined in the plan itself anything further okay moving on fiscal year 2024 budget timeline of, of events please John I provide you with uh, uh, working with our finance director we came, uh, we uh, came up with a uh, budget uh, calendar in order to build this uh, up next coming school year's uh, budget um, and um, I think we've made some adjustments from last year that we think are realistic and I think will be uh, give us more effective time to work with uh, all staff in the building this budget so every person in the school from teacher to uh, administrator will have an opportunity to weigh in on on the budget if it uh, if it has any impact on them at all <clears throat> and so if the co committee is comfortable with that um, we'll move forward on that if you did you want me to go through each through the whole calendar uh, no. no okay as well as you presented it to us if there's yeah. questions I'm sure they're to let us know I'll let you know anything on that ladies and gentlemen yeah uh, uh, mr. Solo no nah, thank you um because now we got a way to keep track of where the budget process should be uh, and we have to move a little dissect this a little bit more before I could actually have more comments so that might be at the next meeting uh, thank you. Oh, and Leo, by the way, thank you for making the suggestion of the bus company sending the email. Mm. So this calendar is for this year? For the school year that we're developing uh, a budget it says for the... 2024. The budget yeah, is 2024. It, the calendar is this year, right? It's uh, well. This year's calendar is 22-23. Next year will be 23-24. So it's what what we call budget 24. I I guess I didn't ask the question the right way. These dates in the calendar are happening this year. Oh, correct. Yes. Okay. That's yes. What I, that's my question. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, uh, Mr. Swallow. Starting September 2023. Correct. Okay, yes. so September 27, uh, submitted to the school committee. Are we moving forward from here forward? Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay, if there's nothing further, Mass Hire Workforce Board meeting update, John? I did want to update the committee that, um, that uh, Sue Amano and myself were invited to the uh, Mass Hire State Work Board meeting and uh, state conference on Thursday, September 15th to report out to the board and to the, um, the Secretary Acosta on our work that we've done with uh, CTI uh, as a grant recipient, uh, probably with the most workforce development programs. They wanted to learn more about um, how our programs work and uh, the success of the program and the benefits to our citizens and um, uh, and they had a lot of questions for us regarding um, everything from instructors to uh, the specifics of the program themselves but we were asked because uh, they felt as though our, our program was a, a model for other schools and other districts so we did that on uh, uh, September 15 2022 anything further Admission policy update, John. So um, you have a copy. The admissions policy work is still ongoing. We haven't completed it yet because there are some significant uh, concerns and uh, work being done around the equity aspect of the uh, policy to ensure that we are meeting the expectations and, ben and ensuring that all students have a fair opportunity to apply to GLTS and, and get in. Um, because there are so many students that are applying and we have such a long wait list, 
Um, one of the standards that's critical for us to meet that we have been uh, struggling with the last couple of years is the number of uh, EL students that are uh, accepted into the, uh, not so much even accepted, well I should say accepted into the school and special ed. So our numbers have been going down. Uh, and uh, I think part of the problem of that has been um, because so many students are applying, we don't know who's a special ed student or who's an ELL student. So we need to look at what our criteria, what criteria is to see if uh, the criteria is equitable and fair to EL students and special ed students. So we are, uh, we were given a grant to do some research work, which has been going ongoing uh, for one last year, and then we received a second grant to continue that work. Uh, and I think we're close to, uh, I'm hoping that next school committee will be able to bring you a final version. Uh, some the things that are, uh, you, there are some changes in here that are in red that you can take a look at um, before next meeting. And uh, the critical pieces that we are looking at closely, uh, we do have a, a committee together that's done a lot of good work. Um, some of the area, the area that of particular concern that we're working on is our uh, criteria, our point criteria that we use for accepting students and how they score on the uh, application. So everything from uh, scholarship achievement, attendance, school discipline, and um, recommendations. Uh, th that point system we're looking at closely to see uh, if it needs to be. Uh, changes need to be made into it. So we've we've made um, we're trying different versions of this particular system and going back and looking at the students we accepted this year to see what the impact of our uh, acceptance would have been had had we had a different uh, criteria in terms of the point system and how that would impact our uh, moving forward. So we're doing some continued work on that and um, should have some, um, hopefully have something completed by the next school committee meeting so uh, that we can give you that would be more concrete for your consideration. Uh, Vivian? Superintendent, I'm noticing that under uh, late applications there hasn't been any changes. Um, as we discussed previously, we, um, we mentioned how, and you could correct me if I'm not speaking correctly on this on this topic, but um, late applications, some students, depending on how they're graded, they are bumped up from students that did apply on time, correct? So are we, are we not addressing that? We, we are addressing it and looking at it. Here's a, uh, some of the problems with that is, <clears throat> well, our, our policy, uh, is an open enrollment. So uh, February is um, the uh, when we start accepting students or looking at or start scoring students. One of the problems that come out of a discussion with the committee in particular who are working on the equity piece of it is the con one of the concerns with putting a hard deadline in <coughs> is that uh, they feel like that might have a bigger impact on EL students and special ed students and regular students. So um, they tend to submit later uh, applications, albeit there are others too that do well. So that's, I'm not saying that that wouldn't be a recommendation coming out, but they want to look at it more closely before they, and give you a rationale if they recommend that that not be the case. So that not saying that that won't change, just that, that, that that's being looked at. And I want to make sure that I'm not um, being misunderstood um, in the previous conversations and comments that I've made regarding uh, late applications. By no means am I saying that when a student applies late that they should be discarded completely. Um, but I do think that there is a level of unfairness uh, for those that did apply on time and uh, a student that applied late is able to take seniority in the list. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I was clear in regards to that. Um, do you mind also uh, letting me know what does this orange box next to school discipline slash conduct? Um, I'm not quite sure what is that supposed to represent. 
seven, page seven of 11. It's right next to suspensions. So I'm assuming it's because <clears throat> there's a change. Yep, so that's a uh, major change in uh, school discipline. We are not allowed to utilize school uh, discipline uh, in our scoring except for if someone is suspended uh, other than like for regular uh, disciplinary issues we used to if a student was um, uh, had a detention for detention let's say they would lose points we can no longer utilize uh, disciplinary actions day-to-day -day actions that are not severe the only thing we can use if it's a severe action or discipline issue that came up then we can uh, deduct points but other than that we can't utilize uh, discipline as a criteria um. I'm just gonna continue to go down the list of things that I saw if you don't mind um, sure. under page 9 of 11 where it says replace with in red each student is evaluated based on a scoring rubric, which includes the following categories, um, collaboration and employability. What do you mean by that? So <clears throat> it's, it's a criteria in which students would be, uh, if they work well together, uh, they collaborate. So if they're working as a team or if they're collaborating well with the, uh, the instructor, uh, they're staying on task all the time, uh, those are the kinds of things that they would be evaluated on and, and could get graded on. The collaboration part wasn't uh, so much my, I guess, uh, my confusion. It was the employability. So we're evaluating them based on how, on their freshman year, on how employable they are, um, if we were to refer them to a co-op site. No. no? It's specifically when they're in a specific program how well they meet employability skills in terms of are they staying on task are they working well with others the th kinds of things that an employer would think are important but only for that one program not for like if they do poorly in carpentry it would impact it could impact their uh, points for carpentry their grade in carpentry but not in any other program Um, and I'll just, uh, con considering that this isn't, we're not voting on approving or anything like that. Um, so I'll leave it for, I, I guess, whenever we continue to discuss um, the admissions. Um, the fact that I have discussed it many times um, regarding the whole appeal process and how us as a as a school especially a vocational school what could we do to be more efficient and effective um, in a technical way when it comes to the appeal process I'm not sure if that's something that would have to be discussed within um, this policy per se but um, we'll we'll get to it in further detail I guess as time progresses yeah so if you have any ideas or thoughts on that uh, I would love to have you email them to me because as they're doing this work, um, if you might be considering or thinking about something they've not thought of at all that might be beneficial in doing their work. So I'd be happy to hear from you know any thoughts you have regarding that because uh, they would I could pass that along to the committee that's working on this. You all set, Vivian? Uh, yeah. Yeah, at this time, anything further? Yes, uh, Zoila. At the moment, I only have one question. Um, back on the, the conversation on late applications, you mentioned that it's because we have open enrollment. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Um, so my question is, are we going to consider um, to not to uh, have open enrollment like we already discussed uh, in previous meetings? That is part of the committee's discussion regarding open enrollment, whether we should continue to have an open enrollment or have a, a specific deadline. The, the committee will make a recommendation to the school committee um, on that, 
and uh, with rationale either way why they believe it we should have it or we shouldn't have it uh, for the uh, school committee's consideration. Mr. Sorello? Um, do we have any conf um, conversation with Desi? Because I know that even us approving this, it still needs a Desi approval, which they can definitely override at uh, any time. Um, are they, and I can't remember that all they guidelines they said for the in um, admissions policy can we close the um, open enrollment based on Desi's um, requirements or in? Desi has uh, very they really don't have requirements the way they used to I mean they have expectations more than they have requirements but um, they outline what are some what they feel might be some of the things that are uh, we need to re, uh, uh, find uh, resolve, like the special ed in the uh, ELL. Uh, but in terms of the policy, it's totally up to the school committees. This is the school committee's policy, which we submit to the Department of Ed. Now, if, we, if you, we put something in the policy they don't like, they'll get back to us if they feel as though it's something that uh, has an impact on students getting into the school. But basically, it's. Um, it's up to the school committee to present their policy. If a policy we put in place results in um, only high-performing students getting into the school, and they feel like we're not being uh, uh, not having a, a fair and equitable system, then they can come back and uh, request us to do um, um, a uh, what do they call it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pulling names out of the hat. <laughs> yeah. Lottery. That's the word I was trying to think of. Yes. Lottery. Vivian? I just want to make sure that uh, the, the committee that you have in place, um, considering how much it, it feels like since I've been a committee member, that the majority of the complaints when it comes to the whole admission process, enrollment process, it comes when a student is either denied or waitlisted and the majority of the complaints is that it comes across that the parents are not aware as to why. Um, so if there's something that the committee could put in place that it's not violating DESI rules or gu and guidelines regarding the rubric that we have in place and highlighting within that rubric where that student, ha you know, how is it that, uh, you know, their point system has been calculated. That way it's showing the parent the reasons why. Um, so if that's something that, you know, you guys could take into consideration, I think it would alleviate a lot of the questions and, you know, concerns that parents have in feeling that they don't have an understanding why the student was waitlisted. In the letter. Yeah, within the letter. Yeah, the, the, the well, I don't want to call it denial letter because now it's it's, it's a waitlist letter. I mean, it's a wait list letter. If, they're, if they know it was attendance or grade issues that they could look at before they could apply for an appeal, they know what they're looking for. Um, and, and, it, and yeah, if it's in the, wait, um, the letter they received, it gives them a little bit more information and a little more clarity. So out of curiosity, my apologies, Leo. Considering what I'm seeing right now, the rubric, right, as to how we conduct our point system when we're calculating the whole enrollment process, do the parents know that their student um, in attendance, they scored a 10, in Scholastic, they, their, their child scored a 25. Like, are they notified on the letter? Can we do that? Um, I'm not saying we can't do that, but it, it can cause a lot of other issues. Um, I will bring it up to the committee, and uh, we'll have a discussion on the letter that goes out to the parents. Um, what is the best way to address the parent concerns with why students aren't accepted. We don't typically, in the letter, doesn't say, well, they only got 10 points for this or they only got 15 points for that. I, um, 
suspect that one of the uh, and I don't I'm not going to say this is um, totally the rationale for it but then uh, it becomes a lot more uh, subjective and more difficult you're going to get a lot more calls and then people are going to try to you know uh, argue the point of you know why that point or disagree with the amount of points that somebody got I, I think it just causes more controversy but uh, I'll bring it to the committee and we can get a better and I'll come back with a better understanding a clear understanding of you know what are the difficulties of doing what you're asking what are, what would be the uh, outcome or the consequence of what you might be asking that fair enough I I think it would alleviate in the sense of so if if the if a parent wants to appeal they at least have an understanding as to what they're appealing for because you're requiring parents to bring in documentation to def to justify the the appeal so if they have no clue if it's an attendance issue or if it's a dis you know what i mean they wouldn't know why they're appealing and what documentations they need to bring to to justify and defend themselves um but i i'm actually looking forward to hearing the pros and the cons um and i think it's it's i don't i don't know i don't i don't maybe it's my lack of ignorance in the sense of me not seeing um the the cons uh, i mean the challenges to some degree because like i said it's black and white like a parent you know if if there's an attendance issue it's like a parent you can't really argue you know if your if your student if your child was absent x amount of times or if they were suspended you know th th there are certain things that you can't argue um so i'm looking forward to hearing what are the pros and the cons from the committee yes and um when the final version gets presented to the committee i will have the director of guidance and admissions here also to help answer questions that you may have and also can help articulate because she's the overseeing the committee so she'll be able to answer a lot of the committee the thinking that went on with the committee as well might be useful in answering some of your concerns all set vivian oh, yeah. okay. uh, mr sorolo I think if, if they understand there's this attendance issue or not disciplinary because disciplinary would be, it would be if they had a, a, a severe infraction. Um, but the grades issue, if there's something like that along the lines, I mean, the point system might do bring a lot of more confusion. Um, but if they understand that it's attendance and their submit day, the kids was out for medical and the school didn't put it appropriately, then they at least they know that it was a attendance issue. They could go back to the school and say, oh, well, there was a medical reason that my kid was out. Um, but can we, they could have reapplied the, um, those medical letters to the schools so they could fix those um, attendance issues before coming here. Um, that would be a little bit more of a clarification for the parents, especially when they're making calls to school committee members saying this is what it is. And, and it's like, well, you know, bring that stuff back to to the schools. Vivian? I guess I'm curious today. Would you happen to know, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm super curious today. I don't know if you have this answer, uh, Superintendent, but uh, would you happen to know the majority of the students that we wait list, is it due to academic issues is it an attendance thing like where what are the percentages <coughs> most kids who don't get in the biggest issue is attendance has a big impact on students not getting in uh, more so than even grades so that's where a lot of this yeah so you would be shocked at how many att attendance problems there are but I will say that we do articulate and, and when we meet with the guidance counselors which we will be meeting with them soon from our different various schools we do tell them we do explain to them when they do the any parents that has extenuating circumstances and also we articulate this to the guidance counselors themselves if they know that there was an extenuating circumstances on absentee that should, they should note that because um, we do consider that and look at that yeah 
Zoila? You, <laughs> you're spreading it. Um, question. So, remind me why we stopped denying and we now only have waiting lists because um, the way I see it, if we have a waiting list, because one of the things that I thought you were going to say why we have such a large waiting list is because we don't have the, um, the seats to give to, to students. I mean, obviously we have um, more applications than what we can accept. Um, so why are we not doing the deny and waiting list? So it helps the process of knowing, okay, this student definitely, they, they are not considered and then we have a waiting list. I think uh, the Department of Education uh, frowns on denials, and they, and they, uh, well, it's something, I mean, if we wanted to do that process, we still could, but they don't like the idea of us denying, to say that you're denied from coming in. You're not denied, you're just on a wait list because of um, where you scored so um, and you know and we're always open you know you could be the last one on the wait list if you do an appeal you may still get in there might be uh, our rationales or there may be extenuating circumstances we're unaware of that we're still you know you still may get in but if we deny you you're done okay. yeah I think I understand Anything further? Uh, anything further, uh, Mr. Cervello? Um Now, following the curious trend, um, is there anywhere online where the parents apply? They're sh they're shown that they've got a, a waitlist letter, not denial, waitlist letter. And and because if we send them emails and we send them letters, they should be able to be a process online where they could just start filing. Um, the appeal process there as well makes it easier for them instead of sending out millions of emails and, and or physically coming to the schools to drop off letters uh, in terms of uh, on the uh, response on the wait list uh, I'm not sure if there's a uh, anything might be a, a something for us to pursue to look at that might be helpful so that's actually a, I'm not sure myself I'd have to check with Brenda on that um, but if we don't that might be something we want to consider anything further no we're all curiosity out huh okay very good yes it is it's a very important topic to especially for to a lot of people no doubt about it okay um, aquatics handbook the chair will accept them this has to be voted on the chair will accept the motion to accept the aquatics handbook To, to accept the handbook. Yes, I'm sorry. Maybe I pronounced it incorrectly. The water, the, the, the swimming pool handbook. How's that? Did I have a motion in a second? Okay. Discussion, Mrs. Fischel? Yeah, there was a second, right? It was, oh, I thought there was. I'm sorry. Mrs. Fischel, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I had a question, a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I'm probably the only committee member that read every single word of it. Um, but um, the, my first comment is that um, this looks like the incredible work of our two CPOs, Jen Duby and, Is and Isabel Joya. And I think it's fantastic. There are a couple of things that I would want if we do um, approve this as submitted to us, that at some point, either on the front or the back, it says adopted or approved as of today's date, um, because so that it will come before us as other regulations might need to be done. Um, I, I really, it's comprehensive. I do wish that the state regulations would come into this century anyway and stop using the term bather load or bathers rather than swimmers. Originally swimming pools were used as 
bathing unit so um it's just a side comment so, because so many times in here bather is used and it's because of the state regulation so um congratulations to the changes that were made and the work they continue to do and it's a great place So you're uh, okay. We can't do anything about the bathers, okay? But but your motion, you want to include the date on the front, okay? Are you okay? Yeah. You okay? Okay with that? Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, the uh, Alice uh, alert update. Uh, John, I was wondering about this. Um, is there any good, anything going to be said that shouldn't go out to the public? Uh, I don't, no, I don't think so. We've uh, uh, we've kept the faculty. We've kept everybody informed on this, and what I'm going to articulate to you probably is a little more uh, detail on the specifics. But uh, there isn't anything in here that I think uh, would war warrant any real uh, severe concern. Well, I'm not too worried about the severe concern. I'm worried about it's it's a warning system, and you know. It's supposed, it's supposed to work, okay, don't get me wrong, it's supposed to work properly, but I just don't want to give the particulars out to the public of how it, uh, of how it works or how it, sure. uh, it should work. Yeah, well, I'm, we can I mean, first we'll vet it, it out in an executive session That's if you'd what, like. I, I wonder if we, I'm just wondering if we should do that. Mr. Hayden. Sure. I think this should be done in an executive session. Yeah, so that's my that's my feeling on it. Okay. Chair, accept the motion to uh, move this to the end of the meeting to executive session. So move. Uh, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Sorry, John didn't give you the heads up on that, but just okay. okay. Principal's report. Is she still here? Oh yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I'm excited to. Um, to share some details regarding back to school night, our summer reading program, our September staff professional development, and just update you on um, an exciting opportunity we have coming up uh, as part of Hispanic Heritage Month, we're having a, a community family game night. So um, I wanna start off with our back to school night uh, this year. Um, it was pretty exciting for not only um, faculty but families as well as all of us this is our first in-person back to school night since 2019 um, and one of the other things that we did um, was we kind of um, looked at it a little different and we really tried to connect students and families and teachers um, kind of from a student perspective we used to have our back to school night a little bit later in the um, year and it was around um, first quarter progress reports and so sometimes the the purpose of back to school night was really just to introduce um, parents and guardians uh, to teachers and connect them them with the curriculum in both shop and academic areas um, it, sometimes it got a little bit lost um, so this year uh, we not only had it earlier but we um, changed the format um, you know we had families arriving we split our schedule into academic and shop time we um, had parents and caregivers follow the actual student schedule. So there's a lot of parents hustling around the building like they're students because we didn't give them much time in between. Um, we also made allowances for our grade nine families because they do not have a shop yet. And we presented, we did a present, the CTE team did a presentation on our new exploratory discovery process. Um, Overall, I just want to share too, we had a staff survey. We had 60 staff members fill out the survey after. And um, you can see that, um, I'm sure there's more, but um, even I was pretty excited to see that some staff responded that they saw 40 or more um, parents. So I thought that was great just to share. Um, some of them say not applicable, um, may have been um, our members of our support staff um, or other words, but I thought it was really exciting to see that um, we had um, staff members seeing that many um, parents. Um, and just a visual for you, um, it was, uh, a packed house. I, I will say that um, I believe that around by 6:30 we had the parking lot full, and um, it was a great night. And I had a lot of feedback from both staff and um, parents that were excited to be here. 
Any qu any questions for the principal? Uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald? No, I, I, no. No questions, just a wonderful comment. It was so nice to see on the unofficial parent website so many positive comments. Um, the only thing that was mentioned to a negative that I saw was the fact that parking was at a premium. So I'm assuming that night school was also going on at the time, which takes up a lot of spaces. But anyway, it was just wonderful to hear all the positive comments. That's great. And um, actually, night school was canceled, um, but we have all of our staff. And typically, for our, for our open house and other events, we move our staff over to a different parking lot. We've never done that before at a back-to-school night, but that's already a plan for next year to ensure that we have more parking. Anything further? I have a question. Of, um, I'm sorry, John. No, second. go ahead. I have a question. Um, I should know the answer to this. Our student representative, when are they expected to, uh, to join us? I was going to mention that um, oh, so uh, Maureen is going to join us in October she was going to join tonight um, but she's going to join us on the October 11th meeting um, we're also recruiting an additional student member but she will be back she actually stopped by this uh, later this afternoon to see uh, the superintendent and I she'll be back are you already sick of hearing of me no I'm kidding <laughs> yeah no she'll be back yep she'll be back in October 100 percent very nice reports last year. Yep. She will be back it. October 11th. Okay, thank you. Uh, Superintendent? Um, well, I at this time just wanted to congratulate Susan and the team that worked on putting the uh, back to school night together. It was the best back to school night in the 50 years I've been in education that I've ever attended. So it was pretty exciting and it was just amazing to see not only the uh, enthusiasm of the parents, but the staff and it just went it was just a terrific event terrific night so uh, a great congratulations to everybody in the school that put so much effort and time into planning it thanks it was it was great to see so many families in the building and we look forward to having more events which I'll talk about a little bit um, so I, I promise the staff I we will plan a little better next year but the next day after our busy back to school night we had our community school-wide summer reading program and uh, this year was a Jeopardy theme. Um, so again, we had all members of our staff, teachers, guidance counselors, administrators, anyone that we could get to um, kind of, you know, contribute, we had them. Uh, we had a little bit of a different, this was a Jeopardy theme. So we had students in discussion groups and they also um, had an opportunity to play a, a Jeopardy theme game um, during summer reading. Um, it was great, so um, I was a little bit nervous about this, the students wanting to participate in some of the acting out and drawing, but that was their favorite part. Um, so it was, it was great to see the, you know, a community. And I also just want to thank the committee, because this committee, the last meeting of last year, um, voted to um, contribute and, and make available some funding so we could give out more books. And I will say that we had great participation this year. Um, so a shout out to all of the um, staff, especially the library media specialist and the summer reading committee for making our summer reading a great success this year. Um, we also had our September professional development. We started and the theme of our first um, professional development session, which aligns with our work we're doing with university design learning and MTSS is the topic was unlearning. And um, I just wanted to share a couple of slides. Um, you know, the theme was uh, that like we do the best we can until we learn like how to think, do things better. And that only is not only in life, but also in education. Um, so it was a great, great um, session for our teachers to kind of reflect on, um, you know, what, what are some things that maybe that they have changed in their practice or maybe one of those, what are the, some of the things that they want to change and let go. Um, so I just even shared these slides, like we talked about how, you know, things have changed and like at the time when you use something, you think it's great until you know better. Um, I also shared, um, these are some of the staff reflections um, on some things that they said, um, what it's time for them to let go in their practice. Um, I was pretty excited to see some of these. Um, silent classrooms, lectures, assigned seats. Um, we're really trying to get to the whole idea of UDL and providing choice and opportunity for our students. 
So it was a great session, and I think it's a great way to start off the year. We are also um, in the process. Hispanic Heritage Month is underway here. And um, some of the things that we've been doing is uh, this year, some of the added uh, features is we're going to start a door decorating contest. So any um, shop, any classroom, they are in the process of putting up door decorations. We are going to have them judged. Um, I saw one come up already in dental that's pretty amazing. Um, also, Mary Ringland in the cafeteria staff are working to provide um, Hispanic food at l every Thursday during the month. And last week, the students were really excited for that. Um, we are also having our very first family game night. I gave you some information on that. It's going to be um, October 13th in the cafeteria. There's going to be games, some food, and um, different activities. And we encourage all members of our community um, to attend. We've invited staff to bring their families, and we hope that our families will attend, too. And that's my report. You know that she didn't say anything about school committee, so. No, no. I said all members, all members, all members. Oh, she excluded okay. the school committee. You don't want us there. Right. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, Mr. Cirillo? You said every Thursday they have in Spanish food? As, as Do we have a menu? As one <laughs> option, I know. <laughs> um, I'll definitely like to know the menu. I might show up. Um, no, this is great. Thank you for the report. Um, very interesting to see, and it's always great hearing all the good stuff that's happening. I look forward to, some, to, to these reports. Okay. Anything further? Thank you very much. Um, report from committees, I see none, all business. Policy, policies, uh, section B, BDD, school committee, superintendent relations. Need a motion on that? No, oh. Excuse me, yeah, John, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Turn your microphone on, John, please. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. No. So this particular uh, policy uh, outlines the uh, basically the committee and superintendents' relationships and some of the work that we do as a team. And I thought it was important to outline some of it because it has an impact on some of the work that we do together and some of the understanding of how we should work together as a team. So I would read it out loud, to, and then any questions that come forth. I yeah, let me uh, first of all I think I have I, I will in one second John all I think I have is a motion on it correct I have no second right yeah right but I have no second on it right I need a second so before we continue on second superintendent continue please uh, so this, uh, this particular policy school committee superintendent relationship is basically what it outlines and I think it's an important one so that's why I thought it would be important to read through it uh, so it says the committee will leave to the superintendent director all matters of decision and administration that comes within the scope as executive officer or as professional leader of the school district. While the committee reserves itself the ultimate decision of all matters concerning general policy or expenditures of funds, it will normally proceed in these areas after receiving recommendations from its executive officer. Further, the superintendent director may seek guidance from the committee with respect to the matters of operation with whenever appropriate it is necessary to make exceptions to an established policy they will submit the matter to the committee for advice and direction and to the superintendent director will assist the committee in reaching sound judgments and establishing policies and will place before the committee all relevant facts information and reports necessary to keep the committee adequately informed of situations or businesses at at hand so um, I know that um, I think some of the uh, in this particular policy it kind of outlines um, kind of where the line is between my responsibilities to the committee and the committee's responsibilities, um, which I'm not going to go through some. But as I, I believe that at times um, we don't always keep within the lines. And I'm very flexible about that because I respect the committee's intelligence and the committee's um, need to uh, be heard. Uh, but um, I do want the committee to, to um, if they had any questions or not sure about what this all intent or means, that I'm happy to 
uh, respond to any questions. Questions, comments? Yes, uh, Vivian. Superintendent, out of curiosity, um, do you feel like the the committee has overstepped, um, considering the roles and the description that you just read? Have you ever felt that the committee has uh, somehow been confused in regards to their role and overstepping? I do at times. I haven't got into deep discussions, and I say the biggest. The biggest place where that happens often is in postings. If you think about postings, posting is a, is a process that the superintendent determines what the needs are for personnel, what the, um, um, what the requirements are in terms of uh, the skills and the description of what their job responsibilities are, as well as what their uh, need for competencies, uh, degrees, all of that is really under the uh, direction of the superintendent director. Um, and to advise the school committee, we cross that line all the time as far, in my opinion. And, um, and I've asked for a vote on this in the past so that I didn't have to bring that particular issue to the committee. We've had more arguments and, dis and discussions regarding this and I truly believe it crosses the line in terms of my responsibility versus the school committee's responsibility. That's my, that's my, I mean, you ask me, I'm telling you my true and sincere opinion about that. Um, but, and there have been other issues or other, other situations, but as I said, um, I respect the committee's, you know, need to understand and do things, and it's not like I want to control the committee or, the, or any of that. Um, but it can get, it has gotten frustrating for me at times when I'm trying to move the school in a direction or trying to do something in a timely manner and I get jammed up because I don't get something approved by the committee, which is out of the realm of the committee's decision making at times. But I don't argue the point, I just move forward. Vivian, anything further? Anything further? Okay, no. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Mr. Hatem? Mr. Lavoie, you've always had an open door policy. You've put up with me for years being the vice president. I appreciate the fact that you let us be heard. And I, for one, will continue to be heard, and I'm sure you'll open that door all the time. Thank you. And with regards to that, Tommy, I am always open to be heard from the committee, and my door is always open. So if there's any real concerns about the operation of the school or anything that you're unhappy with, I am thrilled to have you come in and have a discussion with me, and I'm happy to do that. I would prefer that um, as to try to have a discussion regarding something you may be unhappy with in a public session when we can resolve it outside of a public session, unless you feel it's important for the public to know then that's fine too. If you feel like if I'm not performing a task that's important for the public to know, then all by, by all means we should discuss it in open session. But if it's something that can be resolved that not necessarily would have an impact on the uh, uh, operation of the school with regards to what the public needs to know, then I would certainly appreciate having communication and discussion um, within my office. And, uh I'm sorry, uh, Tom? Oh, okay. Uh, Zoila? I was going to pass, but because Mr. Um, Mr. Lavoy mentioned um, the posting, and obviously I'm the one that is the most vocal when it comes to posting and the inconsistency of information that we get, I need to say something. Um, I understand what this says here, but when it comes to things like the posting, the job posting, it's things that we need to do. I mean, that's why we are a committee. That's why we need to make decisions and help to make sure that things are being done in the proper way. So again, I, want, I was going to, not to say anything, but I do need to say it just because of the comment you made. So I believe one thing is not related um, to this whole policy. 
as you mentioned. John? So, uh, well, first of all, this isn't directed at you, Zoila. I mean, everyone has had their own consider with regards to postings. But the bottom line is that the postings really belong to the superintendent, not the school committee, in terms of what gets posted and what doesn't get posted, except for is it in the budget. If it's been approved in the budget, you know, what the requirements for the job are, what the job description are, is all in the realm of the superintendent. It's not a policy. The school committee deals with policy and budget. So in terms of voting for the position, that's a budget item. The committee has every right to vote yes or no. So if the, if the position is in the budget, the committee has already voted for that position. There's no need to vote a second time for the position that it's already. So under any other school, that, any district that I'm aware of, the superintendent does not bring back to the committee another vote for a position. That just doesn't happen because it's already been voted in the budget. If it's a new position that's not in the budget, the committee has to vote to allow it to be in the budget. If, in fact, the funding is there, it would be incumbent of the superintendent to demonstrate, along with support from the business uh, director of uh, uh, finance, to uh, ensure that the finance is there and uh, funding is appropriate for that position and the rationale for the position, certainly, that then becomes in the realm of the school committee. Okay, John, I'm going to stop. i got to stop you there. We're getting off track of what we're actually voting on here, to be perfectly honest with you. Not that it's not to be discussed at a later time or whatever, but right now we're talking about the, the two paragraphs that are up there uh, that are going to go into the school committee uh, policy book. Uh, uh, Mr. Cirillo? Based on what's on here, and, and my questions have been passed by a couple of times, I don't see any changes. On it. Are there any changes in this particular section? No. Okay. Okay, is there anything further on this matter? I have a motion. I have a second somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, new business, uh, non table matters. I see three items there. Does anybody want to make a motion to remove any one of those items for discussion? Um, we did the admission policy, we did that already, correct? Yeah. Uh, MCAS, strategic. Uh, strat Go ahead, Mr. Cirillo. I make a motion to um, take MCAS strategies out of off the table. Uh, the motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone, Aye. Oppo anyone opposed? Mr. Sorrell? And, and uh, do we have any um, updates on the strategy we're using to help with the students in the new MCAS to get to up to the, the new MCAS scores that was just, just submitted by DESE earlier in the year? So um, I believe, I'm not sure that the MCAS has been in listed yet, but uh, our intent, uh, intent is the principal is going to do a report on MCAS and strategies and all that at our next meeting. She's working on that at, uh, as we speak. I mean, she's already started doing the work on that and working with our uh, data specialists on uh, re putting together a report on that as well as what we're doing moving forward in terms of supporting students who have either not passed the MCAS or, and also in how strengthening uh, our success moving forward with regards to MCAS. Yeah, and, and I'm looking more, more in particular f with the new scores that have just come out um, with DESE. Um, that's where we're looking to see where, making sure that we're moving in the right direction to make sure our students are, are going to meet, meet those scores. Um, and it's going to be in the next meeting, so I'll probably motion to retable. I had, uh, before I left on vacation, I had missed one meeting. We were discussing um, stop ongoing projects until a lot of the uh, projects that were started and supposed to be done were done. I had met with the superintendent on Wednesday. He was good enough to take me on a tour 
A lot of the shops are still in disarray, but there has been a lot of um, process as far as sheetrocking, electrical. Um, he's really come a long way. We're still not done. I, like uh, Committee Member Cirillo, have my meetings at Market Basket. And uh, the lot, latest one was my daughter's in cosmetology and they're sitting in the library doing related work. And I assured her I was just in cosmetology and the freshmen were up and running and uh, Mr. Lavoie had high hopes on getting everything done. And I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. A lot of work has been done. I'm anxious to see it finished. Uh, our kids have gone through two years worth of COVID. They don't need to go to another half a year of their shop being torn apart. Um, okay, I, that's what I was. I, that's what I thought that might have been. Right, but we, but we, did, we did vote to talk about it. Okay, that's I'm sorry. That was the comment. Okay, I, I know it was. I, I know it was discussed is, when I wasn't here, discuss? and that was fine. I'm sorry. Do you want to make a motion to discuss that? Do you, you have anything further? I want to take it off the table. Okay, I, make a motion. I I thought it was mine. I'd like to make it a motion, please. Yeah, okay. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, do you wish to continue? Wish to continue no, I'm long winded enough. Thank you. Having the discussion on. on the I issue. understand. I thought a, a comment was going to be uh, four, four words. Four words, not, not you know, oh, four sure. paragraphs. I mean, not four paragraphs. This is. Uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, on this matter? Okay, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes, um, I don't remember seeing in here for future, is future agenda items in here? No, I moved into tables. That oh, was a, that okay, was a because I would like a every meeting update on the projects going on. So on basically, the, I don't want to, I don't want to, table it i just want it to be a a regular report so you want to make standing, standing. standing yes right, until done. So, so done okay i'm going to move that okay i have a motion do i have a second, second. discussion all all those in favor Aye. and you want to pose to see where we're going to put that now uh well no we don't have to put on the why don't we put on the superintendent's report please yeah Okay, from the superintendent's report, you can doesn't have to be a long report like Mr. Hayden, it can be something short, you know. Okay, uh, person, if nothing further on this matter, personnel consideration resignations, executive assistant to the principal, effective December 30th, 2022. Uh, leave of absence, retirements, appointments. Uh, the following, ladies and gentlemen, need to be voted on job posting. Superintendent, you're up. Yeah, so um, at this point here, we're looking for a final vote on the uh, posting for director of facility and operation. I think there was a lot of confusion in our last meeting, but uh, we're resubmitting the uh, last uh, posting that we had positioned the uh, description and posting that we'd like to put for, move forward on uh, for uh, director of facilities and operations, if the committee is comfortable with uh, the, uh, the posting as written. Recommend, uh, recommendation. Do I have a second? second? Discussion? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yeah, I guess it's a wording thing again. Um, I don't know why I'm having so much feedback. I, I, can, tell oh, I'm, I can tell you why, but it's not nice. But. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Um, going down to qualifications, number two, contractor license or professional trade license required. I thought that we had decided that the sticking issue was they had to have a contractor's license. So my second part of this, does professional trade mean it would be okay for them to be a licensed electrician, or if they didn't have a contractor's license, they could be a licensed plumber? 
Um, I really thought that we had agreed upon the fact by vote that contractor's license was one of the big sticking points. I don't remember the or professional trade license. You wish to answer that, John? I, don't I, th have I thought there was some discussion on that, but I'm happy to take that part out and just leave it supervisor, construction supervisor's license. I don't have a problem with that if that's what the committee preferred. Um, yep. And anything further, Mr. Sorello? Any other questions or comments? No. No? <laughs> right, so we're all set with that? Okay, all those? Oh, no. Mar Marilyn, you're all set? Oh, that was her suggestion, so I hope you're all set, set with that. You're all set yes. with removing that? You're all set with removing that? Yes. Did you second it? Yeah. yeah. You're okay with that, Mr. Hatem? Yes. Okay, now that we're all hunky dory, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Uh, the next one, Superintendent, uh, early childhood teacher, please. In, uh, in order to open the child care center um, to meet state regulations, we need to uh, hire two early childhood teachers. Uh, for different age levels, you need to have a teacher for each age level. So um, the range would be 50 to 60, and the pay would come out of the um, uh, revenue that we bring in for uh, opening the center. So if we don't have enough, um, if we don't have enough students or children coming in, then we would go with less teachers. So it would be in, uh, aligned with the amount of. Um, children that come in that um, are brought into the program. So we want to post to see um, what would be, if they're, uh, what the interest would be and if we're going to have an issue with finding an early childhood teacher in order to open. We're looking to try to open um, before Thanksgiving. Okay, there's a recommendation from the superintendent. Can I have a motion, please? So I have a second. second. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Sorello. Thank you, Leo. This late in the game, are we going to be able to get any um, school teachers? I mean, early childhood. I mean, I look at the qualifications, and I know it's not going to be the same as our regular staff. Um, but being that there's such a hard time right now filling these positions, um, can we, uh, is, are we even, yeah, I mean, trying. Um, if not, we're going to have to delay the opening. I'm sorry, Superintendent. So in working with the new director of the uh, center, she feels pretty confident we'll find people. Anything further, Mrs. Fitzgerald? I agree with the superintendent at the salary being offered and the fact that a college degree is not required, um, but these are people that are out there already fulfilling this role in other people's programs that are paying less. I think there won't be a problem. They'll be stealing somebody. Zoila, I'm sorry, Zoila. Is this a union position? Is it part of the local seven? No, this won't be a union it's position. No. Nope. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Executive assistant to the principal. So this, this is a replacement position. The executive assistant to the principal is, um, is retiring uh, in December, so we need to post in order to ensure that we have somebody uh, when she retires to assist our principal. 
You don't, you, don't have oh, you don't have the posting because we don't typically give you postings on replacement, I think. But we can, if you. Yeah. Okay, do you accept the motion? We have a second okay. discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, future agenda items. I think it. We already, we already got it. Okay. Uh, I do want to um, let you know that as chair, I'm going to uh, move our, our student report. I'm going to put it under communications for him to here to come. Just nothing against you, Sue. Okay. Just so that uh, she can excuse herself earlier in the meeting if she needs to. Okay. Without us adjusting the agenda every time. And she's more than welcome to stay, too, and, and to con see how we conduct business. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I don't see it here. That's why I didn't see it. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a need for an executive session for contract negotiations, John. And um, yeah. Another Not for, yes. Yeah. Yep. Another agenda item. Have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, we will be coming back here to adjourn. Sue, will you call the roll, please? Miss Fitzgerald. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Hatem? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Ms. Marmel? Yes. And Mr. Lamontang? Yes. And it, what time is it? 8 11. Uh, okay. okay. Where am I? Do we have any Advil or Aspens? I do it, my I do. Oh, no, I have some. I have a whole bottle. I uh, I'm going to the restroom. Yes. I'm in the service. Huh? Are you all right? Do you need it or something? Yeah, man. All right. Let me go get it. I don't need that right now. I'm going to shut this off.